Hey y'all, welcome to this week's show. Um, we're going to get into a really interesting um, tree today. You have a, another one of these medicinal trees. And this one also has some really good food properties. It's the pawpaw. Pawpaw was once a very popular fruit in America. It's uh, native to America, to North America. Um, also called custard apple. Um, they grow up wild, you know, where I live in the mountains. Uh, you may want to uh, look into them as a plant you could grow, you know, in your yard as part of your landscaping. Not a very large tree. And there are some sellers, I believe Stark Brothers Nursery has them, uh, One Green World. Uh, there's some nurseries that do carry pawpaws. And I believe some of them have been uh, bred to tolerate some warmer climates, you know, than we have up here in the mountains. So definitely look into that. But before I um, start talking about this uh, very interesting tree, I want to uh, give you a little announcement. Uh, as, well, I'm recording this on Wednesday, actually Ash Wednesday, and that marks the beginning of Lent. And Lent is traditionally, for the past 2,000 years or so, been a time of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Uh, but the main thing I want to tell you about is um, I wanted to do something to help folks. And, uh, you know, I know the economy is really bad right now. I mean, you know, Biden's economy is a train wreck. And so for my almsgiving, at least part of it for this Lent, I want to give y'all some free books. Just absolutely free ebooks, um, One per person. Just email me, judson at judsoncarroll.com, what book of mine you're interested in. You know, I've written 13 books. Um, go to, um, well, probably the easiest place to look on them. Well, I, obviously everything of mine's on Amazon, so if you want to go through the descriptions and everything there, then just email me. I'll send it to you as a PDF, judson at judsoncarroll.com. Or um, you can go to my blog. It's very pretty well organized uh, along the right-hand side of the page. It's southernappalachianherbs.blogspot.com. You see all my books. And if you click the cover, it goes to a description of the book. And normally I sell these PDFs for $9.99. Uh, so I can, I'm giving them away now. So <laughs> one per person, just email me and ask. Uh, just tell me which book you want, and as soon as I can get to your email, um, I've gotten already. I announced this this morning through my uh, my newsletter, Justin Carroll, Master Herbalist, and I got a good response. So I'm very pleased to say I've already been able to give away a lot of books, uh, so much that I'm having trouble keeping up. So um, if you don't receive your book, you know, right away after you email me, just know I'll get to you uh, as quickly as possible. Um, you know, at least within a, a few hours, you'll you'll have the book. And so um, I'm enjoying doing this. And, uh, you know, I, I hope this will really be, you know, a blessing for folks. So anyway, I hope you'll take advantage of that and enjoy that. Uh, now let's get into the tree, which comes from my book, The um, uh, Medicinal Trees of the American Southeastern Herbalist Guide. That's one of the books you can get if you want. I actually had several people request this book today. Um this the proper name of the pawpaw is as as asamina triloba there's actually a little i in there that's kind of hard to pronounce i usually say asmina it's asimina so a s i m i n a triloba more commonly known as the pawpaw uh, very easy to identify this tree because there's only one uh, the pawpaw has a very unique looking flower uh, you pull up a picture of that online real quick um, very easy to spot this tree once you come to recognize it. It's a uh, it's a really unique native plant, and um, you know I'd love to tell you it has all kinds of uh, really impressive medicinal properties. It does have some, but really the main value is the fruit. And you know, uh, planting fruit trees is a really good thing for preppers to do. Fruit and nut trees, uh, or identifying them in the wild. Uh, pawpaw is sort of our native tropical fruit, but it grows in temperate regions. It's uh, It was long considered a variety of papaya, but it's actually not. It's a unique tree. And like I said, sometimes it's called the custard apple. The fruit is somewhere between a papaya and a banana. So it, it really it does have a fairly um, you know, a unique flavor. 
and it is very good. Uh, you'll very rarely see pawpaws for sale in a store, though, because they just do not ship. They bruise easily. They spoil quickly. It's one you're going to have to grow yourself or, or find it in the woods. And, um, and uh, like I said, it, it does like the mountains where I live. I think it probably grows best naturally in the mountains and hills, but um, I, I think there has been some breeding to uh, allow it to be grown in other climates, so look into that. Uh, it's a smallish tree, as I mentioned. It's one that inhabits the understory, and uh, it would really be far more common <laughs> if it wasn't for uh, real estate and uh, forestry practices that the understory. I mean, people like to go in and clear the understory and just leave the big trees. Um, they actually, that's not a very good practice at all. Um, really, a clear cut is much better for the forest than going in selectively taking trees because everything kind of grows back and finds its own natural place again when everything's cut down. You know, it would happen after a major forest fire. Um, now, I know there may be some forestry guys out there that disagree with me or some logging folks, but really uh, a clear cut is much better than clearing the understory. Um, the, the, the plants, the, the trees, everything's growing in relationship to each other. And, you know, so the, the game, the, the deer and the rabbits and all that, they need that understory. Uh, there need to be bushes and shrubs and all that, clearing everything out like a park, which is unfortunately what a lot of people do. It's just actually quite destructive to a, a natural uh, woodland. You know, if you've got to, if you got to build a house, obviously you got to clear a lot, but, um, like, you know, I have a neighbor up in the mountains. The man is just obsessive. He's retired. Every few days he goes into the woods and cuts down everything that isn't a very large tree. And he just likes to walk around out there and drive his golf cart around in the woods. And it's like, dude, you're ruining the habitat. But, you know, he doesn't care. I mean, it's, and it really uh, annoys me because he's ruined some of my best mushroom hunting grounds uh, because he takes out all the dead wood. Mushrooms need to de have dead wood to eat. They decompose the dead wood. But he thinks it looks messy. So I know there was a wonderful stand of uh, chanterelle mushrooms. It's not there anymore, thanks to um, his uh, endless and tireless efforts. <laughs> it's, it's, the property's close enough to my house that he uh, really gets on my nerves with the chainsaw and the leaf blowers he's constantly using and the tractor. I mean, he makes more noise for no valid reason. I mean, when you got to use equipment, power equipment, you use power equipment. I, I mean, I use a chainsaw to cut down a tree. No big deal, right? But this guy is like, uh, I don't know. He just has way too much time on his hands, and he just kind of drives me crazy. But, hey, you know, another thing I need to work on during Lent is forgiving people. So <laughs> I'm not going to talk bad about, uh, about him. I'll just say... Uh, you know, God bless him, whatever. That's actually, when someone says that in the South, like, bless your heart, it's not actually intended to be a, a very nice statement. It's like, oh, you're so pathetic and pitiful, just, you know, God bless you. But anyway, we'll get back to the subject at hand. Um, like I said, pawpaw is like a mixed forest, not a park-like setting. Uh, the two factors that have led, uh, really, though, to pawpaw falling out of favor is that the, the, the fruit just doesn't ship well. And really, you know, a lot of it, and this is something uh, I've, I've written about extensively. I've probably talked about it on this show before. Um, the reason so much of our knowledge of foraging, of hunting and fishing, of herbal medicine, etc., has been lost, home preserving, canning foods, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is because of the breakdown of the nuclear family, and especially the, the extended family. You know, I know so much of what I know because I got to grow up around my grandparents and great-grandparents and great-aunts and uncles. Um, kids today, you know, don't. I mean, the yeah, most marriages are ending in divorce, and then actually most people aren't even bothering to get married. The, uh, you know, the, the kids that are actually raised in a two-parent family uh, are now the, the minority. I think it's like less than 30% uh, of the population. And um, a lot of people, you know, marry two, three, four times. Like another neighbor of mine, they've been married, uh, I think, three or four times each and have just gotten divorced from each other. You know, that doesn't lead, exactly lead to intact families. That doesn't lead to um, traditions being passed on from generation to generation. And, uh, you know, people move all around the country and they don't grow up and stay in their hometowns anymore. 
So, you know, I mean, it reminds me of an um, episode of Duck Dynasty where, you know, Phil and, and, and Miss Kay realized it was very important to take the grandkids out and show them how to harvest um, black haul berries. And then they took them home and they made uh, haul jam. And, I mean, that's not something most kids these days grow up doing. So, uh, you know, obviously that's a big reason why people don't even really know what a haul, uh, a pawpaw is anymore, much less a black haul or another m member of the, you know, Hawthorne family. Uh, in just a few generations, they were so popular, there was a kid song, picking up pawpaws, put them in your pocket. That, you know, was a song that kids played. It was like a nursery rhyme. Uh, saying, I guess you say, it was like, you know, a nursery rhyme. And now, nobody seems to really know what they are. So, um, I think, on the on one hand, that's, you know, a great tragedy. On the other hand, you know, as a prepper, it means you can have these trees in plain sight, and it's probably one of the fru few fruits kids aren't going to be sneaking onto your property stealing, you know. Um, when I lived in, uh, in Fosco, North Carolina, had a beautiful, huge cherry tree right at the edge of the yard. And two apple trees, um, oh, you know, blackberry bushes everywhere. Yeah, it's, it, it was great. It was really great. And uh, But that cherry tree, every kid in the neighborhood <laughs> knew that cherry tree and knew it had just great, delicious cherries. And it was a real challenge to get out there or to get a ladder high enough to go where the kids hadn't gotten and get some cherries before they were all gone. Uh, so, but you're not going to have that problem with a haw haw, uh, a paw paw, <laughs> and uh, really not with a lot of your heirloom, uh, more you know sour apples, the ugly apples that make the best ciders and pies and um, apple butter. Uh, you you can't go wrong with uh, heirloom apples. They're just fantastic. They're not pretty enough to sell in stores, and you know most kids don't probably wouldn't even recognize them as an apple. But anyway. So, as far as the uh, medicinal use, the fruit is a laxative when eaten in large amounts. The leaves are diuretic and make for a good poultice on wounds and boils, infections, and inflammation. Now, that's probably the way you're going to use it most. It's really good. The bark may be used as a digestive bitter. Actually, the bark of the pawpaw tree is quite good for the stomach and liver and all that. And um, there's also some... Uh, history, some information I found in old books, that it was used uh, as a wash uh, to treat head lice. So you could see it would be a very useful plant um, if, if you uh, happen to be able to grow it. Uh, of the seeds, they have an emetic property. Okay, They can be used as an epicac. They can be used to make you throw up. Miss Greve said that um, emetic, for which a saturated tincture of the bruised seeds is employed, Dose being 60 to tw t uh, 10 to 60 drops. Okay, so what does that mean? It means you take uh, oh, probably about uh, a, a pound or so of the seeds and bruise them, put them in a quart jar and fill up the jar with some good uh, vodka, let it sit for a month, and then it could be used to uh, for emergencies to make you vomit. Okay, the bark has a bitter tonic. And said to contain a powerful acid, and that's probably why it was used for uh, uh, head lice. Um, and the leaves are used as an application for to boils and ulcers, as I said. And that reminds me, you know, another great fruit uh, tree we'll talk about soon that uh, most people don't know about anymore is persimmons, wild persimmons. I gather tons of them every year. And the, the bark and, and leaves have fairly similar properties, actually. You'll be interested in the persimmon. Uh, so good. Uh, you know, I, when we get to that show, I'll, I'll give you my recipe for persimmon bread. Basically, you make it just like banana bread, and it's like dense and chewy. I mean, it has like a molasses texture, and I mean, it's really actually very good. And um, I think, was, yeah, uh, George Washington was very fond of making uh, persimmon beer. He would actually make a bread like that, dry it out, and then use that uh, to make beer out of. Which, anyway, we'll get into that another time. Uh, another one you might want to think about is passion fruit. Uh, it is a you get passion fruit vines established and they grow rampantly. I mean, you have trouble keeping them under control, and that's absolutely delicious fruit. And you, those are those are things: wild persimmons, passion fruits, pawpaws, hallberries. You never see those in stores, and they're just really good for you too. All right, so uh, back to the pawpaw resources of the southern field and forest. 
says that it <clears throat> said that it preferred uh, rich soil soils and particularly grew along streams and had been observed in Spartanburg